Hi everyone, my name is David Punch. I'm one of the uh, admins with the Institute of Disney Photography and uh, we decided to make a couple little tutorial videos and this is going to be my little introduction to Lightroom. Um, if you have Lightroom and you're just starting to get into raw photos, uh, what you're going to end up with raw versus JPEG is a lot more detail, a lot more uh, data to manipulate. Um, basically when your camera shoots a JPEG it captures all that information and then it throws away what it thinks that you don't need and it creates a JPEG image. When you shoot RAW it saves all of that so that you can do the processing and that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, so basically um, I picked a folder uh, from 2017. I have some images here. Uh, these uh, castle shots are the ones that I posted about just a few minutes ago, so that's what we're going to play with. Um, basically, over here you see uh, I do all my uh, files by year, um, and then I give them uh, a title. Just depends on what it is. Um, Disney trips and work and uh, different shoots. Um, in this case, uh, it's a Disney trip from 2017 and uh, we're going to play with this castle shot and turn it into one of these. So, uh, over here you see the, I hope you're following my mouse, so I'm in the library uh, module right now. This is where you can see all your photos from whatever folder you're in. We're going to go over to the develop module. This is where you edit your photos. Um, and so let me give you a quick tour. Uh, over here is presets. Um, I have a lot of different presets. Some people don't. Um, we actually have this little uh, IDP preset uh, group that we made we made for you guys. Um, and I'll post a link to it again. Uh, but it's got some, some simple presets for different uh, settings, different things that you do. So basically, uh, you open up your file and everybody says, okay, now where do I start? Um, Lightroom has done an amazing job with their auto adjust. First thing I do uh, as I load an image in, hit auto adjust. Now here's the here's this <laughs> the gist of this. Raw files are non-destructive. What you're doing with Lightroom is non-destructive editing. You can do anything you want to this file, and it's not going to change the original raw. Uh, file. So you can do, you can change, you can blow the highlights out, you can dump them out, you can pull the shadows up, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff and it's not going to affect the original file. This is why you can have fun with RAW because you can make multiple edits to, to different things and again it's non-destructive so have fun with it, enjoy it. So anyway first thing I do um, over here is hit auto and you can see that Lightroom has decided, you know what, your highlights are a little too high. I'm going to pull those down. This is where they were. It pulled them down to about here. And your shadows are a little low. This is where they were. And so it pulled them up a little bit here. And it pulled the whites up and it really pulled the, uh, the blacks down just a little bit. And it gave me about 15 plus uh, on vibrance. Um, it didn't adjust pretty, anything else really. Um, may, you know, pull up a little bit of sharpening. Um, if I hit reset, oops, see sharpening is still there. If I hit reset, it goes right back to where it was and you can see that nothing's changed. So like I said, first thing I do, um, oh, and somebody had asked about the histogram. So this area up here is the histogram and what it, what it shows is shadows. This is the blacks in the photo. You can see all the blacks, shadows. Uh, exposure is here, you know, um, if you want to bump up your exposure or not. Um, highlights, which are, you know, the high bright whites and that kind of stuff. Uh, and then the whites. So the idea, and like I said in the post, was basically to keep your stuff away from these extremes. You can see where my, my shadows are clipped, those, that, those blue areas. And over here, where highlights would be clipped. I really don't have any because it's a, a dark image. Um, 
But the idea is once I hit auto, if you watch up here, you notice how it moves everything to kind of a neutral. Uh, it brings it to some middle ground. And you could actually grab this and, and manipulate it uh, and, and edit the photo that way. Um, so you can see now, let me, let me get it over here. So now I have some blown highlights and it'll show you right here. Um, the, the blue over here are the blacks that are clipping. Um, that's what those arrows are doing. So that's my first thing. Um, I, I hit auto, I see what it could do. I'm like, you know what? I got something to work with here. Um, you know, it's a good, clean photo. Um, I noticed that I was a little tilted. Um, so over here, crop and straighten is even an auto for that. You can say, you know what? Hit auto and see if you can figure it out. If it can't, grab it, twist it, get it to where you're comfortable. Um, that's about where I see the castle being straight. Um, might want to go a little bit more than that. But so I straighten my shots that way. And that's also where you crop. Um, if you decide, uh, you know what, I want to, I want to output this for an eight by 10 or for Instagram or something. It's got presets in there for that. You know, I'm not losing anything with this sky up here. I'm really not losing anything with the, with the water down here, I could live with this if I wanted to, you know, dead center the, the castle and um, you can go with that. So uh, as we work our way down, like I said, I hit auto, but then you start to go, you know what? That's a little heavy handed. Maybe I don't want my highlights pulled back that much. Maybe I do want a little more contrast. Uh, maybe the shadows are pulled up a little too much and you start playing with these and getting to something that you like. And again, I can't stress this enough, you could do this all day. You could have fun with it, mess with it, it's not gonna affect anything. The whole idea is once you've gotten it to the point that you like, then you export it as a JPEG, and then it saves that file. The original uh, RAW is still in there. You can do whatever you want to it. Um, this right here is white balance. This little eyedropper, uh, the idea is find something gray in your photo, a neutral gray, and click it, and it might change. Notice it warmed it up a little bit. Um, in When you shoot RAW, you don't have to worry about white balance. When you're shooting JPEG, you pretty much have to tell it, okay, I'm shooting in daylight, or cloudy, or under fluorescent lighting, or under tungsten lighting, or whatever, and that's where these color temperatures come in. If you ever see uh, the color temperatures spelled out, uh, you know, in in this way, it's it's cool to warm. So, you know, we're going warmer and warmer, and you kind of get to where the grays look neutral or, you know, where the colors start to look like what they should. So that is a quickie edit uh, from, where did we go? I'm jumping down here. Um, from here to here. That's what we just did. This is a history of all the different little things that we just did. Now, taking this and going crazy with it, um, like some of these, um, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. You can manipulate the colors, you can uh, dump it into other programs uh, like Luminar and uh, I had like Luminar and Color Effects Pro. Um, uh, one uh, on one effects. There's a lot of different programs that will do wackadoodle stuff. And for Disney photos, you can go absolutely crazy and have fun. Um, 
like these. You know, you can really bump the heck out of them um, because it's a Disney photo and, you know, it's supposed to be a little magical.